four practical ways you can shine the light of Jesus in your workplace, in your school, in your community. I'm going to give you four, and each four is going to have three practical examples. All right? Number one, model integrity. Model integrity. Somebody asked me why. Why? Because if you don't have integrity, you will have no influence. So can I just say this? Um, this is, the, this is the, actually, this isn't even one of the examples, but I recommend it. Be punctual. If you're consistently late, that's not excellence. That's irresponsible. And people aren't going to take you seriously. So that's, that's just a freebie. Yeah, I'm not going to charge you for that one. All right. Hey, letter A. Hey, hey, in your workplace, pick up trash. Just pick up trash. I do this test every once in a while here at church because I love, I love this place. I see this as my, as my home. I see this as a spiritual home for all of you. I know that your friends and neighbors and family members are coming. I know that when you're bringing a friend, you don't want them to walk onto some kind of trash in the, in the, in the, in the lobby or even in the church, right, right? So I, I, every once in a while, I, I just do a little test. I'll see something because I'm just like that. I see things like that in it, and I, and I see people walk by it. And, and I have, we have cameras, so we have all you on camera. And, <laughs> but, but what, you know... Because half, half the time we think, oh, it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not my responsibility. Like, don't wait for, like, a leader in your ministry to say, hey, can you help pick that up? Like, oh, okay, yeah. Like, like oh, what does it cost? Two, two and a half seconds? Let me see. One, two. Well, if you, bat, if you have a bad back, maybe four seconds, four. <laughs> Master, my jeans are too tight. It's okay. Whatever excuse you want. Hey, just, just, just pick up trash. That's a simple way. Somebody sees you and, hey, why'd you do that? Hey, I'm a pastor talking about church. I was convicted. And B, be salt and light. Be salt and light. You remember in, in Matthew 5, Jesus begins the Sermon of the Mount, and one of the things that he preaches about is, man, you guys are my followers. You're called to be like a city on a hill. You're called to stand out. Be salt. What does that mean? You are the salt of the earth, he says. What does salt do? Salt brings flavor. Bring flavor to your garden. Bring flavor to your work in a good way. All right? Like, like, add value. Add value. And then be light. You are the light of the world, he says in the same passage. In other words, shine the light of Jesus. Model integrity. Okay? C, under this point, honor all people. Honor all around. Honor up, honor down, honor all around. Honor people. What does that mean? It means you show respect and you show care and you recognize people. People that are above you, people that are parallel with you, and if you're overseeing people, honor. Show honor. Express honor. It will make a difference. Second point, practical. Just practical. Just practical advice. Start a conversation. How are you going to shine light and shine Jesus in your workplace? Start a conversation. And again, I'm not saying to be weird, you know, or to like, you know, as people are in the stalls in the bathroom, like throw tracks in the, you know, and. Like, I'm not trying, don't, don't do something with, just start a conversation. For example, A, tell a story. Tell a story about your own life. Brag about what God has done in your life, in your marriage, in your kids, in your job. Talk about what, you know, what, you know, what, what happened when you were part of a life group and how, man, the Lord really spoke to you. Like, you're allowed to do that at work. You're allowed to do that at school. B, ask some good questions. I encourage you to always have, maybe in your phones, in your notes, whenever you hear a good question, you're like, oh, that could be a good question in, in the right moment. Because there are some questions that literally just open the door for you to share about your faith. Here, I'll give you a few examples. For example, if, you ask, if you're like in a conversation, be like, hey, what's the most courageous thing you've ever done? Like, what's the most, most courageous thing you've ever done? And people, you know, sometimes people will kind of be superficial, whatever, but, but eventually when it comes to your turn, you're going to have some things to say. And another, another one is, another example is, if you could go back and change something in your life, what would it be and why? And those kinds of questions, you know, again, somebody can take it superficial and make a joke or whatever, but, but, but eventually people think about it, and eventually you're going to have an opportunity to talk. Here's another question. What's the most extravagant gift you've ever been given that you maybe didn't even deserve? Can you imagine just people thinking about that, and then when it's your turn to talk, what you could say? Letter C, be vulnerable. When you start up conversations with people at work, be vulnerable. Don't be old school Christianity is be like me. I'm perfect because I'm Christian. Be vulnerable and being able to recognize, hey, man, I mess up sometimes. Or, man, I messed up. I messed up on the project. Guys, I'm so sorry. Like, own it. Be willing to take off your mask. By the way, if my boss is Jesus, he's extended grace to me, right? 
that I didn't deserve and mercy that I didn't deserve. And if we're able to be vulnerable with people and, always, and not just always assume or speak from a position of I got it all together but none of you do type, then that's not going to give any influence. But when you open up and when they say, hey, guys, I'm, hey, guys I was responsible for this, this part of the project. I'm so sorry. I thought this was going to work, but it didn't. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm going to correct this. And like, like that can open the door for people to say, that's different. All right, three, just care for people. When you go to work, hey, when you go to school, just care for people. What a concept. Letter A, pray for your peers. Pray for them. Have you ever prayed for anybody at work? It can make a difference. And by the way, if you know somebody struggling with something, going through something, has a need, or going through a difficulty, just, just be open in the right moment. Don't do it in the middle of a staff meeting. When the, you know, like do it in the right moment during break, whatever, and be like, hey, hey, I heard you're going through this, or, or you mentioned this. Can I pray for you? I'm, you know, I'm a Christian, and I, just, I believe in the power of prayer. Can I pray for you? And if the person says yes, like take advantage and right there, 30-second prayer if you can or whatever, if it's appropriate, pray, and I'm going to continue to pray. If the person says, oh, I don't feel comfortable with that, that's okay. Be like, well, I'll, I'll be praying for you, and just pray for them later. But offer it. Let her be. Here's a good one. Gift a book. When you know somebody's going through something, and I just have to say that my wife is really good at this. She's really good at this. And recently she's been doing it for people in different situations. So just her heart and her brain kind of work that way. But I think we can all train ourselves to, you know, if somebody's going through something and we have, we have a resource or know of something that could help, like, hey, you know what that could mean, somebody? Like in the last couple of weeks, I know that she specifically have gotten some, some grief books for some uh, families that are close to our church that have lost loved ones, a grief book for a teenage daughter, a grief book for a spouse, a grief, you know, and, and just being able to just, just, just gift that, you know, um, or books that have made an impact on your life for, so, for whatever reason that you could just say, hey, I want to gift this to you. Man, that could shine Jesus in your workplace. Uh, here's, here's another one. C, write a note. What are those? We have texts. Well, just try writing a note to encourage somebody. Hey, I've noticed the extra effort you've been putting in on this project. Just want to say I really appreciate you. Here's a Bible verse. Or, or, uh, or a thank you note to somebody who made your job easier or who helped you on a project or, or you know, who studied with you for the test. You know, and you, and you, hey, you write a note. Those things can touch a heart, and they can open the door to reaching. Let me, let me finish off with the last point. Number four, support each other. And this one goes, number four, support each other. This one goes when you realize that there's other Christians at the place that you work. Again, all of our workplaces is different. Some people work in companies where there's hundreds of employees. Some maybe there's a few or some are virtual. I don't know. I don't know what your context is. But if there's other people in the environment who are also believers, support each other. Connect with other believers. It will give you more strength. It'll more people praying if there's something to pray for. It'll, it'll, it'll encourage you. You know what's sad? Like it's, it's exciting, but it's sad at the same time. Like when, when I hear a story of somebody's like, Pastor, I, I work. This guy, we've been working for eight years. And we just, you know, we can then we realize that we're both Christian. I'm like, yeah, that's great. But I'm like, oh, it took you eight years? Like something's wrong there. Or like, yeah, yeah, dad. You know, I came, we went to school and this kid, you know, we've been growing up. We go to school together for seven years. And, you know, he's a Christian too. And, and like in, your, in either of your lives, it never showed enough to know. So support each other. What, what are ways that we can let other people know that we're believers? I just put this kind of like as a little extra is vertical merch, which we're doing, we're getting up, we're, we have some more ideas. You know, some, some people here have told me when I put this vertical shirt on, it says, no God, find freedom, discover it. People ask me what that means and, you know, or, or people that have the vertical church, the bumper sticker, like on the, on the, back, on the, on the back of their car and, and people, people have, I, I, I've had people like <laughs> write to me and says, your people are everywhere, Pastor Virgin, like they're in Hollywood somewhere and, you know, there's a car and they take a picture of the, of the, of the bump of the decal, the decal that's on the, on the car, um, you know, you know, there's this shirt, man, I gotta find that shirt, maybe you threw it away, I don't know, um, I, I bought this shirt that said, I love my wife, but really big, like, like, really, I love my wife, and I remember seeing, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna win some points with my, with my wife, um, and it's funny, because every time I, I would wear that shirt, like, 
every single time, Publix, you know, a store, right? Like every, people are like, oh, I like your shirt. Oh, I like your shirt. Because th- there's statements that catch people's attention. So what can you do, wear, put, like to catch somebody's attention, start a conversation. You know, like my vertical cup. BSM merch. The students got their merch, right? Yeah? I can't hear it. Fire Marshal Bill, what do you say? Next Sunday. Okay. <laughs> Next Sunday. Next Sunday there's going to be more merch. They can buy. You are loved. You are loved. Just talk to Juan and talk to Pastor Jesus Len. They're going to connect you. B, letter B. Hey, check this out. At work. At work. Start a Bible study or a prayer group. I was just trying to be funny. You guys are great. Start a Bible study or a prayer group. When you realize there's somebody else, be like, hey, for lunch today, I'm going to just, I'm going to be studying for something to pray. Join me. And you, you never know what that's going to turn into. I did that at Jackson North Medical Center when I used to work at the hospital. And what turned out is two of us spending some time in the word and, and prayer it turned out to be like seven, then eight, and then more people started coming from other departments. You never know what's going to happen. And let her see, speak up. Just speak up. Just speak up. This, we have too beautiful of a message to, to be silent. Amen. We have too important of a message to say, oh, this is just work. This really doesn't matter. Let me get to church on Sunday. Then it'll matter. You know the two places the statistics say you spend most of your time? In your bed and at work. So while you sleep, put some worship music on. And when you go to work, go with a purpose. Go with a mission. 